Hey everybody, this is Kennedy Hawk from the MCM crew. Today's Mighty Marvel Minutes are a few tips against the modular set, Doomsday Chair. Doomsday Chair is a highly requested topic. It's a modular set that a lot of people struggle with, including myself. And it's all the way back from the Marvel Champions core set. So even stuff introduced in the core set can still be difficult today. It highlights the nefarious villain, or in this case, minion, MODOK, from the AIM organization. And it's featured in the MCM matchup number two. If you listen to the main show, every episode we are starting to challenge the community with the scenario. And right now we're asking everybody to play Red Skull with Doomsday Chair and Galactic Artifacts. So I thought I should give some tips that I've picked up along the way of ways to counter MODOK and his horrible, horrible modular set, the Doomsday Chair. So if you want to participate in that challenge, make sure to get your match in by October 22nd, and then click the Google form in the video description below to submit your results for the show. So first, let's overview the set. There's two copies of the side scheme, the Doomsday Chair. When revealed, if MODOK is not in play, search the encounter deck and discard pile for MODOK and put him into play, engaged with you, then shuffle the encounter deck. So this is going to tutor MODOK, and it has three boost icons. This is horrible. Um, there's two of these, so even if you defeat the first one and you defeat MODOK, he might come up again the very next encounter card because there's a second tutor that's ready to bring him out, which can be very, very frustrating. It's got eight threat, not eight per player, not three per player, which is actually really interesting threat scaling. I actually prefer this kind of threat scaling because unlike the per player threat scaling, um, in solo you're less likely to draw a Doomsday Chair, but you're four times as likely to draw it in multiplayer. So if they had scaled this as three per player, it would have been really annoying in four player. That being said, eight threat is a lot to remove. So it's kind of frustrating. One of my tips about Doomsday Chair is if you could just use that eight threat on the main scheme, it might be a better use of your thwarting potential. All right, so let's look at the minion himself, Modok. He is a unique minion with two scheme, two attack, and eight hit points, and that's not even the worst of it. He has retaliate two. After this character is attacked, deal two damage to the attacking character. That pretty much destroys allies against this character, right? Someone attacks in with three health, they take one consequential damage and two retaliate, and they are defeated. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about retaliate here in a bit and some tips and tricks to get around that. We've got three copies of the attachment Biomechanical Upgrades. Surge, always love Surge, attached to the minion with the highest printed hit points and without another Biomechanical Upgrades attached. When the attached minion would be defeated, heal all damage from it instead, then discard this card. That's horrible. The highest printed hit points is probably going to be Modok because he's got eight, but there are some minions that could get higher. Either way, this is going to be really frustrating, especially if you get Modok down to one health and you draw this, you're going to have to deal that one damage, heal him to eight, and then deal another eight to get rid of him, which can just be devastating. This doesn't trigger when revealed effects a second time, thankfully, with those when revealed minions, but it um, can be a major pain with Modok. So I think the Doomsday Chair set beyond just being modular, is a great way to let players choose their own adventure. There's lots of different ways to handle and counter this set. You can choose to go all in, try to remove everything, defeat MODOK and defeat the side schemes, but typically I've found that's the wrong answer, because as soon as you defeat MODOK, you inevitably reveal a side scheme and he comes back. And as soon as you defeat that side scheme and MODOK, you inevitably reveal the second side scheme and he comes back. So you end up just in this disastrous world of recurring MODOKs where you could have just used all that damage on the villain and won the game, or all that threat control on the main scheme and not lost the game. So... One strategy you could do, strategy zero, which I do not recommend anyone does, is to try to defeat MODOK and try to get rid of the side schemes. It almost never works for me. Instead, use those resources, one of those two resources, on the main agenda, whether that be the main scheme or the villain's health. So the two strategies I would recommend are strategies here, one and two. You can ignore MODOK, just let him sit and play and ping you for two damage a turn, and remove the side schemes. This effectively makes those side schemes really minor effects, right? A side scheme comes out, yeah, it's got eight threat on it, and it places one threat next turn. You can probably choose to ignore it for a turn, or defeat it and trigger a bunch of side scheme shenanigans, but it doesn't fish out MODOK, so it becomes a major minor encounter card. And it's almost like a sigh of relief during the villain phase when you reveal that doomsday chair and MODOK's already out there. Likewise, you could ignore the side schemes and just remove MODOK. This is my preferable way to play. Usually, if there's an acceleration counter out there, I can survive. But if MODOK's out there punching me for two a turn and scheming for two when I flip down, that becomes a problem. So I try to eliminate MODOK once I get both Doomsday Chairs out there. Then, he only comes up once a deck, there's no tutors to find him, it's a lot less likely that you're going to see this biomechanical beast. 
So I prefer this way. I have to pay this tax of having two acceleration counters out there permanently, but I've also removed three boost, two three boost icon cards from the deck and made it so Modoc's more of a minor player. The other way you could play really riskily is to ignore both. You could just say, look, these are things that are eight damage or eight threat removal. Let's say both side schemes are out there. I could thwart for 16 to remove those two acceleration counters, but it's only going to accumulate 16 over eight turns. I could just remove that from the main scheme and ignore him. And same thing with Modok. Like, I could invest 8 damage into him, but if the villain's only got 16 health left or 30 health left, I may as well do a third of the damage to the villain and just try to end the game. Um, this is a little bit risky, because having both of them out there can really snowball if things, things happen poorly, like Master Plan or, like, Gang Up. So it can be a little bit risky, but it's not the end of the world. Um, and it's certainly better than trying to invest all your resources and defeat both, is ignoring both. I still recommend strategy one or two. Let's talk about some cards that help with those strategies. So if you're looking to ignore MODOK, look for things that minimize his impact but still provide value to you. So um, an ally like Spider Girl can come into play. She can stun and confuse MODOK. She can deal four damage. That's worth the three resources just there, let alone delaying MODOK for two turns, giving you two turns where you can, like ignore him before you figure out what you're going to do. Protection card Energy Barrier is one of the cards I really like to use against him, and this is double fold. If you don't want to ignore Mordok, you can take some of his damage and reflect it back at him, but also you can take his damage and reflect it back at the villain. So if you get three Energy Barriers out there, you can just keep reflecting Modok's damage at the villain, and he almost becomes a resource for you. Groot is a really good counter to Modok. After Groot defends against an attack, heal two damage from him, you are soaking up an ally slot, but Groot's going to be able to soak that MODOK attack every turn without taking damage. And if you know you're going to maintain MODOK, you could put things in your deck like Hercules, knowing you're probably going to have minions sitting in front of you to help reduce his cost and other minion shenanigans from aggression. So try to use it to your advantage and not just be overwhelmed by it. All right, if you're going to ignore Doomsday Chair, this is the way I prefer to play. Look for things that are going to counteract that acceleration, because having two acceleration tokens out there is no joking matter, right? If this is Rhino with Doomsday Chair, his scheme pops at th seven threat and solo. So if you're placing three a turn, you got to be able to remove three a turn. So if you have Beat Cops out there, they can just remove the threat that those acceleration tokens place. If you have Counterintelligence, you can use it to ignore that initial threat. Look for things like that. They're going to help you counteract that threat placement because it can add up really, really quickly. All right, let's talk about one of MODOK's other features, this Retaliate 2. Taking two damage back is really horrible. But the way Retaliate works is you don't take that damage back the turn you defeat that minion or villain. So in this case... If we use something like Swinging Web Kick to deal 8 damage to MODOK, that's exactly how much health he has. You don't take any retaliate damage because you defeated him. Now, if he has biomechanical upgrades, you still do, which is a little bit unfortunate. But for the most part, taking big swings like Swinging Web Kick or Heroic Strike and things like that and throwing them into MODOK is going to be the most efficient way to do it. You could also use your own retaliate, right? If you're Black Panther and you're going to let MODOK sit out there, you don't have to completely ignore MODOK, right? You can defeat him slowly over time using your retaliate and just take that free damage or soften him up until it's to the point where you can defeat him in one attack and not take the retaliate two from him. So characters with retaliate, electrostatic armor, energy barrier, which we just mentioned, are great for putting little bits of damage onto MODOK without you taking retaliate. And that brings up the next point. Look for non-attack damage. So look for damage that deals itself to a minion that doesn't come from an attack source. So like when you play Valkyrie, if you played with an energy resource, you can throw three damage onto MODOK and pop him down to five. Now you've only got to do five damage in a turn. That's an uppercut. That's a heroic strike. That's a lot of hero specific attacks. So really look for those um, sources of non-attack damage. Lightning Strike and Thor's Kit can be really good, especially if MODOK somehow gets toughness. Um, but either way, you can just pump some energy resources into damaging MODOK and then worry about defeating him once he's weak enough that you don't take that Retaliate 2. Um, look for it everywhere you can. Another ally from Leadership, Squirrel Girl, when she enters play, deals 1 to MODOK. That only bumps him down to 7. Um, but if you find lots of these different enter play effects, or if you have rapid response or make the call, Squirrel Girl can chump for MODOK and keep coming back into play, keep pinging him for 1 until you can off him. So generally try to get him to that weakened state so you don't have to take that Retaliate 2. None of these cards are bad on their own, and that's the reason you should include them. I would say don't include a card that you consider to be a bad card to help you counteract MODOK. Only include good cards, because including more bad cards in your deck is just going to let MODOK overwhelm you more. 
typically don't focus on the scheme and Modoc. Focus on one thing or the other. But if you are going to focus on both, let's say it's a four-player game and you think you have enough damage and threat control to remove Modoc and the Doomsday Chair and let it keep coming back up. First of all, probably a bad strategy because he's going to keep coming back and keep sucking up your resources instead of you defeating the villain. But bring some things to get rid of him, right? Black Widow and Spycraft are two examples of aspect cards that when Modoc is flipped and it's the worst time for him to come out, or when Doomsday Chair is flipped, you can cancel those effects and then get a different card instead. That being said, like be really careful because there's those three Surge cards in his kit and there's two Doomsday Chairs, so it's very easy to cancel a Doomsday Chair and then just reveal another one, in which case maybe it wasn't necessarily worth it to cancel the card. Either way, bring some cancels if you're planning to try to defeat everything. So those are my main strategy tips for MODOK. What I would say is focus on one of the two things, either focus on eliminating those schemes or focus on eliminating MODOK and leaving those schemes there so MODOK comes up less frequently and you have less three icon cards in the villain deck to punch you in the face with. So those are my main strategy tips for defeating and handling MODOK and the Doomsday Chair. If you have tips, leave them in the comments below for other people in the community to read, comment on, and learn from each other. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.